Good evening. Uh, this is the this week's edition of the Starkville Daily News Digital Express. I'm sports editor Danny P. Smith, and Joel Coleman's our Mississippi State beat writer, uh, joins us uh, today. And uh, Joel, it's uh, you know basketball is uh, you know we're in January now, middle of January, and uh, Mississippi State men. We'll start with them after a, a rough start to conference play. Uh, They've won three straight, and, and last night, the game I got to see was a big one. They beat the Arkansas Razorbacks, and I don't know. I don't know if it's a – what kind of deal it is, but they've always had success at home against Arkansas. I, I don't know what the, the story is there, but it just seems like – you know, home court advantage is big in this series because Mississippi State has a hard time winning in Fable, but Arkansas just doesn't win a whole lot of games in Humphrey Coliseum for whatever reason. I mean, but Mississippi State played well last night, and Reggie Perry, the Southeastern Conference Player of the Week, had another outstanding game. Yeah, what a home stand for State. I guess that's where you start with is State put themselves in a hole after just a, a few SEC games to fall in an 0-3 hole there, and all of a sudden you really have this three-game home stand. You really need to win all three. And they, they really put themselves in a spot where um, to, to stay on a tournament trajectory, they really needed all three. Not only did they get all three, after those three, they're arguably playing better than anybody in the SEC right now. Um, I don't even know it's arguably. I haven't checked around the league, but I mean to have back-to-back 25-plus point wins over uh, Missouri and Georgia, and then to play an Arkansas team that was, I guess, 14 and three before the game yesterday, um, and, and to to defeat them, really good team. Now you sit at three and three in the league, playing as well as anybody. You mentioned Reggie Perry, SEC Player of the Week. He's on a trajectory with three straight double-doubles now. I mean, you can just take it to the bank. He's going to get a double-double in and, and pretty much every game. He's on a trajectory to be the SEC's player of the year yeah. uh, if he keeps that kind of play up. Um, on the trajectory to maybe be an NBA lottery pick, too. I mean, he, he's, he's that good. So, State has, over the course of the last week and a half, completely changed the impression just – what people think of when they think of Mississippi State basketball now. Because when they lost on that last second shot at LSU back almost two weeks ago now, it kind of looked like everything, the high hopes for this year and everything was just slipping away. And uh, I, I think that night that I, I put on Twitter that that tournament door already at 0-3 in the league, yeah, and, and they, there, there were a couple <laughs> of iffy uh, non-conference losses too. That, that tournament door kind of seemed to be shutting a little yeah. bit, but now it, it's busted wide open again. and. For whatever reason, I don't know if it's Nick Weatherspoon now. They've, he's kind of gotten back in the flow. I mean, he can play a basketball game for almost a calendar year. And, uh, and then he comes back, everybody thinks State's going to be better, and it actually seemed to be a little worse <laughs> whenever Nick came back for whatever reason. Yeah. I don't know if it's just communication. Um, I don't know if it's just the growth, too, of like DJ Stewart, who's now starting, um, put, pushing Tyson Carter to the bench, has kind of – reignited a little something in him. Uh, he, he didn't have the greatest of nights against Arkansas, but he had big nights against uh, Missouri and Georgia. Whatever the case is, State's in a really good spot now, and they have a, an even bigger opportunity, and I think opportunity is the right word, on Saturday when, when they play at Oklahoma, at the home of the Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, <laughs> they, 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 it's a true road game, though, against yeah. Oklahoma, and uh, it's an opportunity for a, a quadrant one win. And that's something that State doesn't have yet this right. year. Um, you want to boost that tournament resume, you go to Oklahoma and, and win on Saturday. And that, A, it boosts your tournament resume. But, B, I think it probably gives you an opportunity, if you handle your business down the stretch, to even have a slip-up or two, maybe. Um, so I, I think it's a huge game for State. If they could go and take this winning streak to Oklahoma and win again, um, I don't want to say sitting pretty for the NCAA tournament. They're still – what, a month and a half or more of the season yeah, to go. No, but a lot, lot can happen. But they're considering where they were a couple of weeks ago, they'd be sitting pretty. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you mentioned uh, DJ Stewart, Tyson Carter. Last night they combined for 21 points. If yeah. they can get that out of that spot consistently, they're going to be really in, in good shape. But as of this taping, the Mississippi State women are getting ready to tip off in Nashville against uh, the Vanderbilt Commodores. And it was a disappointing loss for the women on, at South Carolina on Monday night. Uh, one that uh, Vic Schaefer took really hard, as he as he does most losses. But he felt like that, you know, in a four point game or, or less, he feels like he's he's the kind of coach that needs to bring him home, and he really hates it when he can't get the job done. But chance for them to bounce back tonight, and uh, you know, they, they got back in the top ten 
Uh, I, I don't think that loss to South Carolina will, will hurt that very much, but they don't need to go up to Vanderbilt tonight and lose. No, and, and I'll tell you what, just looking at the big picture here, um, I mean, it, losing South Carolina, I mean, they, they could either they could stay where they're at in the ring and maybe may bump up as well as they played right. in, in Columbia. We'll see how that goes. But um, for me, watching, watching the girls at South Carolina, and I knew that it was still a pretty good team. I mean, I, I know it's a young team. I know that they've lost a couple, whatever. But to me, before that game, I kind of saw this team as maybe their ceiling this year is sweet 16-ish. You know, they're, they're good, but they're still growing. And I think next year could be really special kind of deal. They proved to me at Columbia, no, they, they could very well make another run at this thing. I know they lost the game. And I know that nobody, Vic Schaefer especially, doesn't want to claim a moral victory or whatever. But they had a nine-point lead in the fourth quarter against South Carolina. And, and no more I, I, I think that, that Vic Schaefer would probably sit here and say, we should have won the game yeah. is probably what he would say. And, I, you know, maybe should have. Yeah. And they, they proved to me on the road at South Carolina that there is not a team in the country that they can't beat. And so I'm not saying that State's definitely making a Final Four run. I'm not saying that they'll play for a national title again. I mean, I'm not making any grand proclamations. But I'm just saying that whereas, a, a, for me, a week or two ago, I, I probably would have said Sweet 16 is kind of their ceiling. Now I think that, I mean, winning it all is not off the table. I mean, right. it, they, are, they have grown a lot quicker than I thought that they would. And I think, too, it's kind of, it's kind of making me excited about this year. But it's really got to make you excited about next year because yeah. you basically lose what nothing uh, hardly. I mean, like one 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 girl, I think. But it it's got to get you pretty pumped to see what they did at Columbia and and, and it's yeah, funny you talk about Sweet Sixteen. High. There's you know there's not a whole lot of those girls that are very far removed from their 16th <laughs> birthday. True. They're 18, 19 years old, and uh, this is a young team. It's only going to get better. And I, and I believe State learns on learned on today. Thursday, that one of their uh, incoming girls, McDonald's All American, I believe. Right. So, and yeah. he, the, the train's just keeping on rolling. Vic Schaefer is, is, is I, I don't even want to say he's building a monster. He has built a monster at Mississippi State. Right. And he, he's, he's got it going on. But uh, in high school basketball, uh, we're, we've got some, our in town team, the Strong Academy's got a big rivalry game on, on Thursday night of this taping uh, against Heritage Academy. Always a big rivalry when those two get together. And then Friday night, uh, Strava High School hosts uh, Greenville in a big division game for both teams. So it's uh, division basketball in high school is uh, is coming down to the to the wire where seedings are, are starting to be finalized and everything. And, you know, basketball is here, Joel, and football is still getting assistant coaches. We may address that at, uh, at, a, at a different time. But, but what, what was your thought that thought was about the defensive coordinator uh, that they hired? Really good hire, I think. I mean, you look at what he's done uh, in, in his career. And uh, – I mean, San Diego State was a, a top five total defensive team last year. Um, he runs a three three five. It's a really unique style to prepare for. And I think that's one thing that stands out to me is that with Mike Leach and the air raid, uh, that's pretty tough to prepare for. It's kind of unique in the SEC. And then you bring in on the defensive side, Zach Arnett, who's going to run this three three five. Um, kind of Joe Lee Dunnish, I guess, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, it's tough to prepare for. State's going to – cause some headaches for folks I think in the fall because they're going to be one of those teams that's just it's just tough to prepare for for what you're going to see on both sides of football for them so yeah I think it was a really 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 good hire for State when you look at what he's done resume wise the last couple of years um yeah can throw, throw that in with the the talent that's already at State uh to run this aggressive 3-3-5 style that, that he runs good move I think and it's not to know that Errol Thompson's going to be there to to kind of be a part of that but. yeah uh, staff's coming together. Spring football is right around the corner, and, and baseball is right here. So uh, we'll we'll be addressing all that in the coming weeks. But uh, for right now, I'm Danny Smith and Joel Coleman. This this week's edition of Digital Express.